I want to start giving all praises due to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Respect and honor to all you brothers out there and teachers pushing his words with sincerity and truth. Okay? Putting your life on the front line on the battlefield. Preaching the gospel of Yahweh Shah. The good news. The name of this topic is going to be Death Wish concerning this gospel. We have a death wish concerning this gospel. Okay? We're going to first start off with the meaning of death wish is. Okay? And I know some, some of you know what that is, but we're going to go over it anyway. Okay? Okay, death wish. Term commonly applied to those who engage in activities that significantly raise their risk of severe bodily injury or death. Okay? Death wish. Term commonly applied to those who engage in activities that significantly raise their risk of severe bodily injury or death. Now think about the prophet. Think about Mashiach Yahawasha, first and foremost, because he was the leader of this thing. And he made the ultimate sacrifice for, for um, dying for the nation of Israel. Okay? So he was given this duty for the nation of Israel. And we're going to get into that. But he knew that he was going to die. And he embraced that. So what does the term of death wish mean? It says the term commonly applied to those who engage in activity. He, what activity did Yahweh engage in? He engaged in this gospel. Even though he was pre preached this gospel that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and first and foremost, we know that's through scriptures, which is to comfort us for our people. Okay? But most of our people is not going to get it, but first and foremost, it's really for the elect out of Israel. Okay? Now, <clears throat> that's the theme. Okay, death wish. Okay, now the first scripture we're going to go over is Luke 23. We're going to go over Luke 23. Luke 23. Verse 34. And it reads, Then said Yehowasha, Father, forgive them, for they not know what they do. And they parted his remnant and cast lots. Now, when he was saying that, for, Father, forgive them for what they not do, because our people remember he was being judged. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But they picked the, 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 the um, what was it, Barnabas, to be free. Not Barnabas. Um, let's read that. Let's read some of that. It says, And they parted his remnant of the lots and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he be Christ, the chosen of God. They was mocking him. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, which was, you know, sour wine, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And the one of the malefactors which were hung railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, forbade him, so thyself save thyself and us. But, but the other answered, rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, and we, 41, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. Because they know they messed up. But this man have done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, who we know is Yahweh, remember me when thou comes into the kingdom. And Yahweh said unto him, Verily I say unto, this, unto thee day, until thee, today shall thou be with me in paradise. That's because that man believed. Okay? He believed. Okay? 
And that's another thing. Faith is very important in this thing. Okay? So we have a death wish. Okay, now let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.11. 2 Corinthians 4.11. Second Corinthians four, verse eleven, it says, "For we, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh's sake, that the life also of Jesus of Yahweh might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then, death work in us, but life in you." Okay, so read that again. For we, for which we. Live are always delivered unto death for Yahweh's sake, right? And that's the that's going on us because talking about the prophet and those real servants of Yahweh's, and the real servants is going to be picking up this torture state. They know that this walk, the path, is not going to be easy. They know that it's going to be water on one side and it's going to be fire on the other side, and it's so narrow the path that one man can only walk through there at one at a time. And I believe that's second as with seven, verse six and eight. Okay? So we know we're gonna to have to take this torture stake. That's second as with chapter seven, verse six and eight. I'm not gonna get that though, but you can get that. All right, so <clears throat> this is the death wish. We have a death wish concerning this gospel. Anybody that's a real servant of Yahweh, they're gonna know this. And they know that they're gonna pick up their torture stake. And they know that in this path. It's a righteous thing, but even though they can li lose their life, we don't know what's going to happen to us on the streets. We don't know how people are going to get offended <clears throat> or whatever like that and, and, and try to come at us. OK, but we continue to do this by preaching this gospel. OK, now <clears throat> let's go to um, Matthew 15, 24. And the reason why I bring that one up is because we already know that. Yahweh Shah took this, who we call Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shah took on this job to save the nation of Israel. And this is who he died for. Now, the so called quote unquote Christians don't get this because they want to, but they want the nations, the whole world, we are the world joining hands in this, as far as to say that he came for everybody. But if you're a real follower of Yahweh Shah, you would know and understand that through his words, let's see what his words say. Matthew 15, 24. And it reads, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, is that the world? Okay, is that everybody? No, it's not. It's straight to the point and it's written in red. We already know if you call yourself a scholar, okay, back to the basic. This is saying that it's written in red. It's, Yahweh, it's coming out of Yahweh Shah's mouth. It's coming straight from him. So we don't need to look no further if it's coming straight out of his mouth. Okay, so we can't get around that. Okay, now we're going to go to Matthew 10, 5, and 6, the precept. And it says, These twelve Jesus, Yahweh Shah, sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans, into ye not. But go rather to the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. And 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 as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, now the kingdom of heaven is at hand, which first starts with what? This comforting word. Okay, this comforting word. And this comforting word is alive, and it's the scriptures. That's why he said when he would leave, he would leave us the comforter, which is the scriptures, which is the word. And that's why he said, I come in the volume of the book, Old Testament and New Testament. Okay, now let's go to John 19. John 19. So the reason why I bring that out is because, as you can see, that somebody willing to take on this job, and this job is, okay, th um, this job knowing that he was going to die, okay, and he willing to accept this job, okay, and he knew he was going to die. So let's go to John 19, but before we go into that, 
Let me see something. All right, we're not going to use that right now. We're going to stick to this. Um, John 19, 18 and 19. Where they crucified him, two others with him on either side. One, either side, one. And Jesus in the midst, I'm reading this verbatim. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. And, and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. They was mocking him. This title then read many of the Jews for for the place where Jehoshua was crucified was near to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief of the priests, the Jews, to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garment and made four parts, every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. Okay, so you, you know, you see what they did, how they tortured him and everything else, but still it didn't matter. He took he still took on this job. No matter what, he still took on this job for the nation of Israel. Not for the world, for the nation of Israel. He took on this job. And that job that he took, knowing that it was death. So he knew that, remember the definition that we gave you for death wish? Okay? Concerning this gospel. And every man that calling himself a prophet or a follower of, of Jesus, of who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, his name is Jehoshua, have a death wish concerning this gospel. Because if you really know what you're into, it's a possibility that you could be Go through, you're going to go through tribulation. It's a possibility. The scriptures tell you. You're going to be persecuted. Your house tells you that. And you're going to suffer. But the good thing is at the end, if you stay on this marathon and this trail to the end, you're going to get the crown. And that's going to lead to victory. Okay? Okay? So we know what we're embracing here. And that's this death which concerning this gospel. You can't... Um, Please the most high if you don't have a death wish concerning this gospel. Okay? Now, <clears throat> what did I say? Mark 1465. Let's see if that's the same. 1465. Mark 1465. And some begin to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him. You know what buffet means? And to say unto him, that means to hit him violently, punch him, okay? And say unto him, prophesy. And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And Peter was beneath the palace. There come one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, but Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou say. And he went out into the porch and cocked in the cock crow. Now, remember when they was at the dinner table at the Passover, when he said, do this in remembrance of me. Once again, this is bringing out my point even better, is that <clears throat> he knew Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. He also knew that the brothers, when they was going to be put under pressure, that they was going to say, I don't know you. I don't know him. And he said, the cock is going to... Um, um, the cock is going to crew three times, okay? And what happened? They denied him when that pressure came, okay? Now, at the end of this, they all redeemed themselves. They still kept the work, kept the gospel, but we're going to get into that in a few minutes. They kept, they did the straight gate. They just fell on this point. They got weak on that point. And Yahweh knew that, okay? He already knew that they was going to get weak. But my point is, this was a job and duty that he took, and he said, Father, even when he was being persecuted, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Okay? So we got a death wish concerning this gospel, and every man that teaches this gospel and preaches this gospel, you're going to have a death wish for this gospel, because you know what, you can, what this can lead to. Okay? Now, <clears throat> let me give you just a little background on um, some of these... Um, some of the prophets. Now, all the prophets didn't, not all of them become martyrs, okay? Some of them didn't become martyrs. But let me give you a little history. Now, Isaiah, his death was by sowing. They sowed him in half. 
Did you know Paul died from decapitation? And Matthew, he suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia, and he was killed by a sword wound. Okay, that was Matthew. Let's see how Mark died. Mark died in Alexandria, in Egypt, after um, being dragged by horses through the streets until he was dead. That's a death wish. Now, <clears throat> you know all these prophets heard of each other at one time, knew each other, but they could still continue to preach this gospel. And they had, you know, I, I could have been, you know, somebody could have, my bad, somebody could have been Mark, and they could have heard, yo, you know, her, Matthew died. Matthew the apostle died. And then they found out how he died. You could get scared and be like, yo, I'm not preaching this gospel no more because this is going to happen to me. You know, you scared like what, what Peter did when the cock crew. He was like, I don't know this guy. Okay. That's going to lead to, the, to, our tempt, to our temptation with us. We're being, getting this chip. Okay. It's, and the whole world's going to be tried. Okay. Now, let's see how Luke died. Did you know Luke was hung in Greece as a result of his tremendous preaching work to the lost sheep? And now my question is to you, how are you going to die? Those who are claiming to be have a, f a firm foundation in this truth. Those who don't believe in this truth, okay? You're going to die a horrible death, okay? Because if you don't have nothing else out there, this, 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 this words that's inspiring, because there's nothing for us down here that's inspiring, okay? Nothing. All the goody, goody treats and the good things go to the nations. We don't get that, okay? That's another story. We're going to stay on the topic. So these are how all these men died. These prophets of the Lord died. Now let me give you Romans 8.36. Romans 8.36. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And then it says 37, nah, and all these things are we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Read that again. Start from the top. top. Let's start from 35. Read this 34. This is deep. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yeah, rather than rather than that is risen again who is even at the right hand of the most high who also make intercession for us remember how he died he died for us to bring us back into the most high grace so he had to die blood sacrifice for us that was the only way to to give us repentance to put us back into good grace for the to the most high the heavenly father that was the only way through death but he was willingly had a death wish to take that cuz he took that job knowing that he wasn't going to come back okay then it says who shall separate us from the love of Yahweh shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword. <laughs> Read that again. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ, of Yahweh? Shall tribulation? Nope. Or distress? Nope. Or persecution? Nope. Or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword, even unto death. As it is written, for the sake of for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And all these men out here that you you disrespect and you make fun of, they have a death wish for this gospel, okay? Because we are in the business of saving lives, waking up the hopeful elect so they can be in this fold too. And they can come in and join the fruit of the labor of Mashiach Yahusha and get that crown, that victory crown, Okay? This is a beautiful thing that they're doing, but you don't really hear me, though. You don't appreciate that. Okay? You say they don't have no jobs and all this other stuff. We already know what y'all say, but we don't give a damn. And it says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So he, we, we see how he died for us, and we continue to keep on pushing. No matter how hard it may seem, we keep pushing. 
and we keep going out there making videos to try to hope to wake up our people to put our people in a better condition but we already realized two thirds of them are already judged but still that's why we say we are the unprofitable service we're doing what we ought to do that's all we got to do Psalms 116 Psalms 116. This ain't the, this ain't a marathon about who's the best speaker, who put the most videos out. It's a it's, it's a really a meditation and pondering and concentrating on these scriptures to be in good grace with the heavenly Father and His Son. That's what this is about. This ain't about being the best speaker. Who long, how many long I've been out here teaching. This is about building up your nation, the elect first, okay, which is the elect, building them up and hoping our people change around and come back to the glory of the good news of Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Bash, the Father and the Son, okay? That's what this is about. We've got um, Psalms 116, verse 15, and it reads, Precious in the sight of of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That's a beautiful thing. Okay? You know they're going to be they going they going to be protected. They, the Lord they going in the new kingdom come, they're going to be in high prestige. Read it again. Precious. This is Psalms 116:15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Okay, there it is. Now let's go to John eleven twenty six. John eleven twenty six. And it says, And whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Believe thou this? Do you believe this? Now let's go to um this quote, this famous quote. And it says Revolution revolutionary suicide does not mean that I am I'm sorry, revolutionary suicide means suicide my bad, revolutionary suicide does mean that I and my comrades have a death wish. It means just the opposite. <laughs> Read it again. Revolutionary suicide does not mean that I and that I and my comrades have a death wish. It means just the opposite. That's a famous quote by Huey Newton. Okay. So we want to end it in that. I want to read this last scripture again so you can meditate on it. We have a death wish concerning this gospel. And the scripture that I want to read it again, I read it before, but I'm going to read it again. Okay? And it says, John 11, 26. And it says, and this is straight out of Yahweh Shah's mouth. I'm going to start at 25. Yahweh Shah said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me, the he were dead, yet shall he live. That's these scriptures. That's having faith. Okay, that he is the son of the heavenly father. And if you have faith in him, you would do what he asks you. That the, you would follow the law, statute, and commandments. You would love thy neighbor as you loved yourself. Okay? You would know who your enemies are. Okay? And this is what this gospel is for. It's, it's written in parable, cold, dark sentences, dark sentences, because he didn't want everybody to know this. Only his elect. Okay? And then it says in verse 26, which is the point. And whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. Believe thou this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this? And if you do believe this, you would have a death wish concerning this gospel. Another, epi another episode of Performing Arts. Brother Shalom.